Hi, everyone. Um, eu vou falar em inglês porque meu português é portunhol, realmente. <laughs> Next time, I hope I can do it in, in Portuguese. So thank you very much, first of all, to Rosha, Nila, and all the team, Gigi, and uh, for having me here. It's really a pleasure and an honor. Um, as we speak, we are living very turbulent times. Um, we are at the cover of uh, The Economist this month in February, uh, because we are this kind of weird situation right now. We have this president, interim president, that was the president of the assembly and was named by the population to lead this change. And in parallel, we have an uh, unconstitutional government right now continue in power. So you can imagine. So when people ask me what is uh, happening in Venezuela, how I, um, it's not working, the clicking, <laughs> uh, sorry. If you can help me there. Oh, okay, wonderful. Um, I was thinking that many, many times when I'm out, or when I go around, the people ask me, how do you live in Venezuela? Why don't you live? How do you stay there? How's living there? And sometimes I think that is very difficult to, to tell the story, because sometimes it's bipolar living in Venezuela. On one side, you feel sometimes that you live kind of in a war, uh, ob obviously with a huge difference that we don't have bombings. But uh, on the other side, there's a flourish Venezuelan full of hope, possibilities, with entrepreneurs creating wonderful things, with designers, with people that is doing amazing things. So it's not easy to tell you the story. So for example, one year and a half, we have one of our entrepreneurs named uh, one of the top innovators on the 35 in Latin America. While we are protesting on the streets and people is being killed, uh, people doesn't have any food, you go to the supermarket and you don't find almost anything. And it's very, very weird and terrible to live in such extreme. So when you ask me, well, how is a normal day? How's your day? Well, I can tell you, I wake up, sometimes I don't have internet connection at home, sometimes I arrive to the Impact Hub and the in internet is down, or we have uh, blackouts uh, of electricity, there's nothing, there's no power, sometimes it's water that there doesn't arrive, so it's everything collapsing, it's living in a failing state. And the worst part is that we have children dying out of hunger. We have children died at the hospitals because they don't have uh, anything to live. We, we have people that is uh, through, passing through cancer and they don't have anything, uh, any treatment. We have people dying out of di dialysis or epilepsy or diabetes or whatever you can imagine just by a simple infection because there's no antibiotics. So it's, it's, it's not a story, it's the reality with what is happening right now. So we are passing probably for one of the most catastrophes from the economic point of view, as we speak. Uh, the hyperinflation for those has, who has lived an, in a hyperinflation economy, you, you know and you understand what it means. But last year, it closed at 1 million percent. So I don't know if, if you can imagine what this is, but the estimations of, uh, of the IMF for this year is 10 to 13 million percent. So it's, it's just unbearable. The minimum wage after so many raises by the government is just the equivalent of $6 per month. So imagine how can you live with $6? You cannot even buy two eggs. And the price of the eggs changed every day, sometimes many times per day. So it's, it's just impossible. So on the other side, uh, it's not only that. It has been numerous of uh, companies that has been confiscated 
thousands of companies, private enterprises that has closed or have been confiscated by the government. So imagine, there's, that's why is the lack of many things also. Uh, there's a lot of people in jail, uh, including many of my friends. Right now there's 900, more than 900 people in jail, especially students and young people that go to protest on the streets. And among them, there's friends of mine that have been three years in jail, one year and a half in jail, six months in jail, three days. I can name it and I can talk to you later about that if you need more information. But that's why we really need to have different kind of people. So that's why I personally started the Impact Hub together with my co-founder. But that's why we at our community, we are living more than ever the values of trust, collaboration, and courage. Because whatever you are demanding on the streets, you need to be the protagonists of that change. So that's why we insist that more than ever, we need to be citizen entrepreneurs. Our country demands not only to take care of your initiatives, your social entrepreneurship, or your entrepreneurship with any type of impact, but also to be citizen entrepreneurs. So, for example, I used to cry, and I can tell you, I used to cry a lot when I, saw, uh, when I see people eating from the garbage, tons of families eating from the garbage, or in line to wait for a subsidized food from the government. But I decided I couldn't continue crying. I, I don't cry anymore, not because I don't have sensitivity, but because I, with sadness and tears, we only feed the darkness and we need to shine a light right now. So we started to say, well, what can we do at Impact Hub with this situation? Because obviously we cannot feed the world, but at least we are going to feed the children and the youth and the people that we have in our social programs. So last year we feed and we serve 50,000, 57,000 meals at the Impact Hub in our social programs. Same thing happened with medicines. We said we cannot find medicine for everyone, but at least we did a fundraising campaign and with that money we were able to provide uh, medicines for all the treatments for all the people at Impact Hub and their families. And we helped 67 families. So we are also on the streets protesting every time that is required. And I've been, you know, bumped by tear gas many times, running for my life with tear gas, ro uh, rubber bullets. I've seen people dying. I've seen people take, being arrested illegally. But we are there because we really believe that we need to do something else. We cannot continue the same way, uh, accepting uh, an un un constitutional government. So we decided to help also the entrepreneurs to live through this because it's very complicated and it's very emotional, devastating all the, all the time. So we started also to do some programming dedicated to well-being and health, simple things like teaching entrepreneurs how to embrace emotions, how to reframe them, how to learn how to breathe, and how to live in peace when you are surrounded by violence, how to protest in a non-violent way, etc. And the last one that we did was we brought uh, a, one of the survivors from the Rwanda genocide to talk about the forgiveness, the power of, of, of forgiveness. So at Impact Hub, we are already 200 entrepreneurs that we are more than ever living that values, trust, collaboration, courage, empathy, solidarity, and, and we really embrace it. We embrace it as citizen entrepreneurs. And, and that's why we also, uh, well, we were very proud to be named as a case of study this year, just last month, for a collaboration case, for the collaboration, uh, collaboration among our members. And uh, I can say that despite all the crisis in, in the middle of this, we have been, um, Co collectively working together more than ever. So 45% of our entrepreneurs have jointly started a new project. 23% of our members have co-developed a new innovation. 
and 35% uh, of our entrepreneurs have started a new business together. And this is real collaboration. It's not only talking on being together in the same space. It's really profoundly doing something together to change what you don't like, to create new solutions for what is needed, or to create opportunities or access for the ones that doesn't have it. So I know that this is probably one of the worst crises that my country are, has been living and passing through. But I just want to, to tell you that if somehow you can be inspired by the resilience and the collaboration that our members and we are living as Venezuelans, because I'm not sure it's only me, if you ask any Venezuelan, you will listen to stories very similar. Um, I hope that you can learn from that without going through a, such a hard times that we are living. And just to, to finish, I would like to share with you our manifesto of, of resilience that we have created within our community. So we don't panic. This is our first commandment. We embrace life and adversity with optimism and hope. We um, have a mindset that take out the model of uh, uh, scarcity and um, encourage a model of abundance. We focus on what we can control, relatively control, and not dispersed. We uh, use creativity and talent to solve what we don't like, looking at the needs and the problems and bringing solutions that are based on impact and purpose businesses. We embrace the values of trust, collaboration, uh, courage, empathy, and solidarity. We know that we are a community and that's why we are not alone. We have the um, convincement that we are going to create impact to solve all this problem together if we take collective action. We want to be warriors and not treated as victims. And we always keep and leave room for humor despite the circumstances. So we really think that ordinary people can create extraordinary action if we do it together. Thank you very much.